Love you. Love you. All right, we're gonna try to record this video um, with the tractor sometimes running in the background. We'll see how well the sound comes out. It's often a challenge for me to film outside because of all the extra noises, whether it's the wind or heavy equipment or even just people driving by. So on our homestead, breaking ground for a new plot is definitely a challenge. So we've had some success or we've had a great deal of success using um, different no-dig methods like lasagna gardening beds. We've tried just filling raised beds with imported garden soil and compost. We've done Hugo culture and all of those methods work pretty well if you're doing a small concentrated area, uh, just a small scale garden. However, if you are trying to be self-sufficient and say produce enough food for two people for an entire year, and this especially becomes more challenging if you are deciding to go the organic gardening route, you are going to need a whole lot more space than most people anticipate. I definitely have had the, uh, the blinders taken off of my eyes about how much space you actually need to feed even just one person. So finding enough organic material to cover a large area is very challenging. And even if we did somehow manage to find enough grass clippings and raked leaves and kitchen scraps, there's still the time factor. So our soils are heavy clay and if we just pile organic matter on top of it, there really isn't enough life to begin with to pull the organic matter down into the soil without having to wait honestly five to ten years to, to have the effect that we're hoping to have. So we need to use some more efficient methods and hopefully cheaper methods to try and improve our clay soils. Heavy clay soils are very compact, so they don't tend to let a lot of air pockets within the soil. And this is very important for your plant's root system. If there's a lot of compaction and not a lot of aeration, you tend to have very stunted, weak roots versus light, fluffy soil, which allows roots to spread more readily. Heavy clay soils are also low in organic matter. So in order for us to grow healthy vegetables here, we need to find a quick, efficient, and affordable method of getting as much organic matter deep into the soil as possible. So that way we can start building up our soil bank of organic matter that's gonna act as a sponge and retain water. It's also going to feed the microbial life in the soil and help improve it over time. If we can address this as quickly as possible, that means that we can eventually stop tilling, start planting, and start implementing a lot more of those no-dig practices that we're ultimately interested in doing on this property. So we have found that cover cropping and green manuring with buckwheat is the solution to this problem. So I'm gonna show you how we use buckwheat to improve large areas of soil in just a few seasons. I'll also show you how I like to use it in our raised beds. So if you have a garden that struggles with heavy clay soils like ours does, you'll find a lot of this information helpful. And that's true whether or not you decide to till. We are using tilling to speed up the process of adding organic matter, but you can also use buckwheat in no dig methods as well. And I'll talk a little bit about that in this video. All right, let's head out to the garden and we will talk about green manuring with buckwheat. So what is buckwheat? Now, even though it's called buckwheat, it's not related to wheat, but is actually a member of the Polygonaceae family, which includes rhubarb and wood sorrel. Buckwheat is incredibly versatile. It's great for cover cropping, as a livestock feed. You can even use it to make gluten-free flour or boil the seeds as a substitute for rice and oats. We love eating buckwheat in this family, but in this video, we're going to focus on how we can use buckwheat as a cover crop to improve our soils. Whether you're a large scale operation or a tiny homestead like ours, cover cropping is a game changer in agriculture, helping to maintain soil health between plantings through moisture retention, weed suppression, and improving nutrient availability and microbial activity within the soil. And guess what? Buckwheat checks all of those boxes. One of the best things about buckwheat is that it grows fast and it's not too picky about where it grows. Even here in Maine, we can fit three to four rotations of buckwheat in just one season. We let it grow until it starts to flower, then we till it back into the heavy clay soils. And 
And while tilling is not the solution for good soil health, it is a great way to get all of that organic matter mixed in rather than just having it sit on top of the heavy clay. This back corner has been tilled for the last two years with, I believe, four full rounds of buckwheat in total. And while there is still a long ways to go, the difference is noticeable. I'll be shoveling this corner into mounds to grow burdock as part of our perennial root vegetable source. This is how we are transitioning some of our tilled areas into permaculture plots and permanent raised beds. Just look at how much effort we've put into building the soil in the last two years. Here is the difference between our two-year-old garden where we've added straws, grasses, and wood chips as mulch versus this new ground we're breaking today. The next season, we'll be applying a wood chip mulch between all of the new raised beds. The difference in the soil health is really night and day. The soil here is moist just beneath the surface and is full of organic matter, even healthy fungal activity as shown by the bits of white you can see in this handful of soil. Buckwheat performs well in heavy clay soils with little aeration and available nutrients. I've tried growing things like kale and calendula in these soils before, and they've always ended up scrawny and pest-ridden. Buckwheat, however, is excellent at scavenging phosphorus, a crucial nutrient for plant growth. Using buckwheat as a green manure not only adds moisture-retaining organic matter back into the soil, but also feeds future vegetables as it breaks down. Other than needing a good watering after sowing, buckwheat requires very little attention to grow and go to seed. Buckwheat has been fantastic at suppressing weeds, transforming the open fields around our vegetable garden as we prepare to build more raised beds. For just $60, we got 50 pounds of buckwheat locally, more than enough to sow a quarter of an acre multiple times in one season. When vegetable crops like potatoes, garlic, and green beans finish for the season, I used to hate seeing those bare, unproductive beds. This old potato bed is already starting to get baked in the heat. Instead of covering them with grass clippings like I used to do, now I add an inch of compost and plant buckwheat. It keeps the soil protected from the sun and heat, makes the beds look green and productive, and when I'm ready, I can lay the buckwheat down as a mulch and plant between it as it breaks down. In our garlic bed, we're doing just that, laying down the buckwheat and letting it decompose on the soil surface. In another month or so, we'll be replanting garlic for next spring. Buckwheat is also an amazing wildlife attractant. Bees love buckwheat flowers, and you'll find your garden buzzing with pollinators with this plant around. Birds love to eat the seeds, and amphibious critters also enjoy the shade cover. Of course, it's in the name, buckwheat also attracts deer, so keep that in mind. Even though we're converting many of our tilled fields into permanent, no-dig beds as we expand our garden, we still plan to dedicate an area for buckwheat for our future chickens. They'll enjoy the seeds, which we can save to supplement their winter diet, and they also enjoy to eat the stems and leaves of young buckwheat. Next year, I'm really looking forward to fencing my chickens in a field of buckwheat and watching them forage for bugs. Buckwheat is a cheap and effective way to improve the fertility of your soils, keep your raised beds looking green in between plantings, and is a wonderful food source for wildlife and for attracting pollinators. And remember, if you don't like to till, you don't have to. You can also use this as a cover crop and simply lay it down before it flowers, and it works excellent as a mulch in any raised bed. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.